Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hey, Francesca. Long time to see you, Ahmed. Yeah, they've been keeping me busy. <laughs> but I think that the <laughs> next, I think I'll be at ECC if you're going to be there for our next. Uh, oh, nice. Trip. We should we should definitely then organize uh, some uh, specific like uh, protocol panel that might be good. You know, like post merge, post Chappella. That might be cool. Yeah, no, well, I course. can ping ping me separately. I think we but we have a lot of topics we can discuss, but it would be a cool time to to organize for sure. All right, thanks everyone for joining. Um, we're gonna give a few more minutes. Yeah, there's an agenda that was just pasted into the chat. Not too many items in specific that I've placed in there, um, but we can talk about whatever. Um, we also have some new folks on the call, so maybe we can do some intros and uh, answer like any kind of Q&A. Yeah, I see new faces. So welcome, everybody. New, you new see squares. faces? I need to fix new my Zoom. Squares. <laughs> Wait, no faces. Names, so let's say that. <laughs> well, I'm pasting the, the link uh, for everybody. Um, I'm right now on mobile, but Matt, you wanna you wanna share the the link? We can go through. I think like there were a couple of points, um, but not that much. So we we'll probably like to be shared. Yeah, I'm. I can just honestly share my screen if that makes sense. Um, we're still having folks come in, so I'll probably wait another moment or two. Um, but I'll still share the screen in the short in the meantime. Whoops, that's huge. Oh, geez. No, it's still getting bigger. <laughs> that looks good. Okay. Um, we can always get started, and then as if people join, we can go we can do what we need to do. So we have some new folks on the call. Uh, does Would anyone like to volunteer to go through intros? Uh, if not, I can start for those that don't know me. Um, I'm Matt Nelson. I work at Consensus as a project or product manager. Sometimes it feels like a project manager uh, for the BASU team uh, at Consensus. And um, yeah, happy to see new faces on the call. I'm definitely eager to help out folks contribute, what have you. Uh, so let us know how we can help. Okay, okay, next. next. Um, oh, go ahead. Go no, no, uh, I'll go for it. Yeah, go all right. Yeah, I'm Gary Schulte. I'm on uh, the Chupacabra team at Consensus, which has traditionally been a mainnet focused BASU team, although uh, Consensus now has a uh, broad mainnet focus. So all of the all of the BASU teams at Consensus are now mainnet focused. Um, yeah, I've been uh, working on Basu for about two years now, and um, on Discord, uh, my handle will often be Suburban Dad if I haven't already changed it to my full name. Um, and um, yeah, feel free to ping me with uh, any kind of questions you've got. I end up typically doing uh, just because of the time where the time zone works out. I, I do maybe about half of the releases, uh, release coordinations, and. Um, uh, focused a lot on uh, the storage layer at the moment uh, in Basu. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thanks, Harry. Uh, yeah, Francesco here. I'm part of the DevRel uh, team at Consensus. I'm helping out uh, with uh, with those like uh, contributor call and uh, doing some housekeeping. And uh, uh, and yeah, I'm just excited about everything that is around the protocol and Basu related. And if you to ping me. Uh, yeah, around like you know agendas and uh, and other uh, housekeeping things. I will pop for now to um, Justin. 
Hey, I'm Justin Florentine, um, protocol developer on the Base U team. I work for Consensus. Um, uh, let's see, working on 4844 mostly these days. <clears throat> um, you can find me on all of the things as Robocop's gone mad. So, welcome to all you new faces. Uh, hi, I'm George Zebran. I'm part of Web3 Labs. Uh, I'm a backend engineer. I'm I started working for them like uh, one and a half year ago, and now my main responsibility is the Web3J library. And I also I, I mean I joined another, uh, another contributor school, but that was a long time ago, so <laughs> I'm pretty new. Also, I did the PR, like I contributed to BES, and I have, I mostly I deal with it uh, every day. Oh, I can go next. So I'm uh, Nisha, so same from Web3 Labs and contributing to Web3J and BESU. Oh, yeah, so I have a couple of yeah, PRs merged, and yeah, looking forward to contributing more. Okay, uh, Fabio, Di Fabio from uh, uh, working on consensus as well, joined it one year and a half ago. Uh, my focus uh, has changed during the but always on mainnet during the year. Lately, I'm working mainly on transaction pool stuff. And yes, uh, welcome to you know, join us. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Izian from the PSU team at uh, Consensus. I am focusing mainly on the performance work and the memory issues. Welcome, everyone. I'm Dan O'Farron. I'm a Swirls Labs. Um, I've been working on BASU for a while now. Uh, my current area of focus is EVM performance and EVM upgrades to the EVM object format. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Daniel. I also work at Consensus as a um, protocol engineer. I joined around one and a half years ago or so, I think. Um, lately, I've worked a bit on the um, tracing side, uh, for example, and some RPC stuff. Uh, hi, my name's Matthew Whitehead. Uh, I'm in the UK, as you may be able to tell from my accent. Um, I work for a company called Kaleido, uh, and um, I contribute, uh, so far I've contributed primarily to another Hyperledger project called Hyperledger Firefly, which is a, a middleware stack that uh, runs against any uh, Ethereum chains. Um, and uh, I'm interested in becoming more more involved in Besu contribution. I haven't uh, contributed anything yet, um, uh, as we sort of uh, try and understand how it can be a good fit for our enterprise customers. So we we have more of a focus on permissioned and zero gas sort of environments. Um, but today I'm here really just to listen and learn. And and um, uh, yeah, I, I've been spending the last ten days trying to get up to speed with Besu generally. <laughs> Awesome. Welcome, everyone. Thanks again. Oh, did uh, Nishal, did I? You, you speak up? I'm not sure. I don't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, I already did, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks, everyone, for joining. Hopefully, these meetings continue to get bigger and bigger as we get more folks on board. Um, I didn't go through the housekeeping before, but there is a Linux Foundation antitrust notice. Um, basically, just be ethical, have fun. Uh, this meeting is recorded and we put all these meetings on the wiki, uh, as you might know, uh, and just stay muted and use uh, appropriate things. So as far as release updates are concerned, 23.4.0 is out. There's a ton of changes that I won't go through. Um, a lot of changes around mainnet, some breaking changes on privacy. So for those on the enterprise side, definitely go through and release, read this carefully. Um, there's removal of Go quorum compatible privacy features. And also, we are planning on deprecating the GoQuorum compatible permissioning in the next quarterly release, 23.7. Um, this one isn't as 
contentious because we frankly haven't even documented that BASU is compatible with GoQuorum compatible permissioning, uh, partially because we don't necessarily want people using it. Um, but we will be deprecating in 23.7 and we removed IBFT1 as well in this version uh, 23.4.0. So I'm not sure what you know a lot of the enterprise folks are using. They should be on IBFT2 or QBFT in general. Um, we haven't discussed too carefully what a migration path looks like from IBFT1. Um, that's something we can definitely discuss. I don't know if consensus would be able to build it ourselves, but we definitely would be able to support uh, any kind of approach to migration. Uh, also, um, IBFT2 to QBFT migration path uh, might also be useful in the long term, depending on what people's networks are using, considering QBFT is what we're kind of pushing as the most production ready uh, and you know the most current uh, consensus algorithm on the private network side. Tons of other stuff on performance and changes, uh, some EVM performance improvements, regular performance improvements, RPC updates, um, memory fixes, an update to RocksDB8, um, yada, yada, yada. Fixes for uh, zero base fee uh, rock proposals and uh, London Fork support uh, for the validator smart contracts in KBFT. Any questions or comments on the release? And then we, if not, we can go into the bulk of our stuff today. Uh, no, uh, I mean, a few days ago, I started to update uh, WebGJ EVM to your, uh, I mean, actually on Monday, uh, I started to do the update to this uh, new release version. And I noticed that uh, from all the components, the BESU, if I'm not wrong, BESU internal crypto, it's still pointing to the older version. Can you, I mean, do you have an idea why it wasn't also that on release? I mean, to have the same versions as we have so far. In the EVM stuff? Uh, yes, in the EVM. Uh, because if I, you're pointing to the current stuff, that must have been some, some release bug that that crept through it should be at the same version as everything else okay uh okay just a second because i should have the link somewhere with uh, the memory repo and i was looking inside there and i saw only 23.1 if i'm not wrong um we did change the name of some of the crypto things to make it external 23.1 no that was this Post details, um, we'll sort it out. It should be using the current. There's no reason for it to use um, out of sync versions. Okay, once I found it, I will just uh, paste it here in the chat. Maybe it wasn't updated yesterday, updated yesterday and that's why it failed when I tried to get the dependency. But anyway, it was just for curiosity. Would you mind posting that in the release channel? I, you know what? If you post it in chat, I'll post it in the release channel. That way it's cap captured there on Discord. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, Diego is not on the call. So we don't, I don't think we really need to discuss 5330. Uh, we missed it in the 23.4 release, but we'll put it in the 23.4.1 release. Um, well, one aspect of 5330 was that we were potentially going to do a fast follow for that does that are we going to um, do a 2341 follow-up um, so that we can get that in since that does uh, break sync for ethereum classic and anybody doing a full sync of mainnet i think also i think that sounds warranted and then if we also missed a release on native we can do that as well yeah and there's dependency bump too that sally put in yesterday oh right for the GraphQL stuff. So it could be it could be worthwhile doing a quick check. Um, we can discuss a, uh, well. an expedited schedule would be a, a Friday burn-in release with a Wednesday, next Wednesday release for 2341, if that's what we want to do. Cool. Yeah, we'd have to finish up the PR. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, exactly. So we definitely don't want to rush it more than that. But yeah, we can discuss in the release channel. I, I think that is warranted, especially with uh, the GraphQL dependency bump. 
I don't know how many folks are using it, but definitely want to fix that uh, vulnerability that was disclosed in the dependencies. Cool. Where was this GraphQL vulnerability disclosed? Let me, it's, uh, sorry, it was in the, a user actually put in an issue for a dependency bump. I'm trying to find it. Here we go. I'll paste this in the chat too, Dano. Um, yeah. So it's just a generic GraphQL issue, not something targeting Ethereum. Oh, no, yeah. It's it's a like a consumption, resource consumption situation. So definitely can bump it up. And since it's not enabled by default, it's not super critical, but definitely want to get this. If we're doing a fast follow release, we can definitely include this to bump. And Sally's already opened a PR to update these. Um, does that include the uh, withdrawals uh, fields in it? Or is that something I would need to look into? Because I know there have been some uh, changes to the spec to turn on some of the withdrawals and other stuff added in Shanghai to the GraphQL uh, spec. Mm. Um, there's no way it'll be ready for the fast follow, so it's no need to get it in this Friday. Okay. Yeah, no, I... I and those I mean, are related to the Hive failures. There's Hive tests for these new yeah. features now. Yeah, Gabriel was working on some of the withdrawals failures. I don't think we're specific to GraphQL, but we can uh, probably push that to point two. Oh yeah, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, if if I'll I'll reach out to Gabriel in Discord and have him post an update and see if they there's overlap. Okay, back to the wiki. No wrong wiki. Cool. Also, there is a proposal here from Simon. He captured the details from last contributor call on his proposal to avoid cherry picked releases. Um, his new proposal is basically to avoid cherry picks. I'm going to give two, I think a minute. Folks want to just read this. It's not very much text, and then we can discuss. I think this is this essentially is a different way of saying let's get rid of release candidates. I think yes for the quarterly, but for the point releases, it's you know point more... releases point releases are from main. Uh, the only thing that comes from cherry picks, like by by. Uh, process is uh, release candidates. I think it would be reasonable, honestly, to to skip the whole release candidate process uh, in favor of just uh, having a release from main that we have a, a public beta of that we, we burn in, so to speak, for a bit longer and uh, alert the public. Uh, anybody who wants to test ahead that can help us um, ensure the quality of a quarterly release. I think that would be a reasonable strategy as opposed to if we're trying to avoid cherry picks and the complexity there. So the flip side of avoiding cherry picks is sometimes you're gonna to have to freeze people out of submitting things to mainline and that's very problematic. I agree. I, I think cherry picks and release candidates are, are a useful a uh, useful process to have. We don't, I don't think we have to have them all the time if we don't have something that we're worried about freezing somebody out on, but I think it's a good tool to have in the bag. I'm gonna keep notes here. Yeah, I mean, I agree with this, but I would not wanna have to like, it, we create a situation where we are reverting PRs <laughs> potentially at like as a counter to the kind of RC process. So which is more of a pain, right? I don't know. I'm, I'm, that was more of a question. 
ripping code out is from what I've got the rever reverting certain things is just relatively simple from what I've gathered, but it's. I think one of the artifacts of the chair of the release candidate process is that we end up with these release branches that we can always use as a, a way to backport fixes to prior versions. And that's, um, that's really useful to have, in my opinion, I mean, we could, we could probably still do that without release candidates, but, um, I mean, if we want to abandon the whole notion of release candidates, then maybe what we should do is get off of our current Semver release cycle and just say, you know, this is Calver. And if you want to be current, you need to be on the latest one. And, and then we're not going to backport bug fixes. We haven't really been backporting bug fixes much either way. We've done the thing where we, we well, I think what we've done is the, additional point release on top of a stable release branch in addition to the quarterly. That's I think some kind of CVEs cool. we've actually backported, but that's that's a pretty rare. I think that's the only case I can think of where we've actually done releases on prior quarterlies. Mm. So when there's a hard fork on mainnet that kind of blows everyone's uh, prior version support up anyway, because you have to advance forward to support Shanghai if you want to sync mainnet. So, so Semver already doesn't really work well for a mainnet client. Yeah, um, and there's been, you know, we've discussed a couple of times, not necessarily a different release strategy for private network releases, but some kind of either like a rubber stamp or something similar, because I think you're right, Dano, that it, it, it doesn't really make much sense with the mainnet releases. And frankly, with the velocity that we've had on kind of mainnet versus private networks, like it doesn't make as much sense for the private networks either. Um, I think that my preference would be that we've coalesced on a strategy that works for both, um, but basically loosely favors mainnet because I feel like the majority of the changes that go into the client each release are either tailored towards mainnet or are specifically you know, kind of related to that. If if we see more contribution from the, the like private network code base, I would argue for something different. But as we gain steam, I think it would be better to just kind of collaborate on what that would look like. Maybe some of the enterprise folks on the call, because, you know, I, I don't know how many of your users are picking up quarterly releases or even releases every two weeks or are updated beyond something with a 22 in front of it. So I, I can I can speak from from our point of view, and, and that's really that we have we have a SaaS offering. So so we update uh, to to releases that we have have sort of validated, and we know are the right the right release for um uh, you know we're not going to break existing customers that kind of thing. Um, so we we cherry pick releases much more than the average user I expect. Gotcha. Does it does does the Calver, or, uh, sorry, does Simver help you at all? It, like the quarterly releases help with that, or is that just immaterial and you're going version by version? Um, I don't think it's super critical, particularly. Um, I think you know we're we're going version by version, certainly from the point of view of paying close attention to breaking changes, um, and checking if we have customers, for example, on IBFT one. Um, that yeah, is obviously one of the most current sort of breaking changes that we have to be aware of. Um, so yeah, I I don't feel like it adds a huge amount of sort of value in and of itself right now. That's good feedback because I think that the only the only the only reason the only justification I can think of for uh, doing Simber is for stability for enterprise releases. So if our enterprise customers don't see the value in that, then there's there's going evaluating on release by release, then we can simplify things. Yeah, what would your proposal be, Gary? Well, basically just go to Calver, release more like Teku does, where you, you release when you're ready and you don't uh, worry particularly about uh, release candidates and cherry picks and, and backporting. I think that for, for large changes, for we, we could potentially still have a 
a longer burn-in for significant changes and, and uh, open public beta. Anyone else? We'll need to flesh out the governance of who decides when and what the required participation is. Yeah, that's the good counterpoint is that with the with the kind of two week release cycle, there's no arbiter uh, to your point, Gary. Um, like the tech team decides when it's ready because it's kind of a centralized entity that can decide those things. Um, Right now, we've just had kind of a rough consensus on uh, basic contributors or basic release channel. I mean, I would I would uh, advocate for trying to maintain that rough consensus because oftentimes we can create a bunch of process that doesn't really benefit us. It doesn't benefit, you know, not us. I mean, uh, us is all basic contributors and basic users. Um, I guess I would just uh, you know advocate for consensus within Discord um, and open to counterpoint. So it would all have to be in public. This has burned us before where consensus decided in their own realms and with their own tests and for their own standards, when a release is soup and when it's not to the exclusion of literally every other contributor. So that is, you know, why these processes have been proposed is because they have been abused in the past. So that's the one thing that needs to be considered in any change to this is how those abuses will be prevented. I think at minimum, we could discuss the removal of the Sember, just move to more of a Calvert type structure where instead of these kind of quarterlies where we shove everything in, because I don't, I think to the point of most folks is that localizing the kind of breaking changes and some of the more like speculative improvements on the quarterlies doesn't really seem to do anything. And it just kind of oftentimes delays the quarterlies um, to the, to two plus weeks after they're intended to go out and it just creates development it makes development at that time kind of a pain that could be you know what is that a step one and then we could discuss once we're on kind of a more caliber based structure i think it'll be more flexible to move around from that kind of two-week cadence so dano do you have a notion about how we could uh gate releases uh, on GitHub, because like, right now any contributor can do a release and it's it's really only needs two people if you're going to do a PR for it. So um, I don't have any, I don't have a great idea for, or a great experience on GitHub about how to gate the release process, but it seems like that would be the way to, uh, to, to force some level of consensus on releases. So Unless we're going to put, you know, like some multi key thing on there or whatever, I don't think that we can really block the release software. What we'll just we would have to see when we see violations that would go back and yank privileges would be the solution there. Um, you do a release out of, out of, you know, out of spec, then you lose your commit privileges. Uh, that's the way a lot of places do it. Um, but I think there just needs to be a strong commitment that any and all discussions about releases must be in public and must not be done in private and any standards must be done in public and there must be a consensus grown of all the contributors um, rather than one team pushing through their will tromping over the expressed dissents of other contributors yeah completely agree i, I don't think we've had any situations like that recently Ex that, that i'm aware of we just had some six months ago so that's recent what was what was the issue? That was the merge. The merge. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. Okay. I got places to go. See ya. Bye. <laughs> I was abrupt. Goodbye, Dana. It is at top of the hour. Um, we can uh, pick that one back up, I suppose. That's too bad. I was hoping he'd be around for this next discussion. Um, hmm. the other things yeah we want to discuss two items that 
might require honestly well there might be some input on the on the last bullet point from folks on the call we're thinking of we're trying to decide how we can best uh not abstract but architect some of the consensus formats so that it's easier to maintain the code base long term and not have to kind of move out other consensus mechanisms like poa or pow um basically to in order to better serve proof of stake so you know there's a few different approaches I mean we could have some more um context provided by the team but you know we're we're thinking through what it would look like to basically pluginize some of these consensus mechanisms uh or you know, particularly proof of proof of work um but we don't have any ethereum classic reps on the call today um any context maybe that someone wants to add here from our team or another team i saw some, matt you came off mute i i yeah i came off mute i guess yeah to, to ask for a bit more context um just, just to understand a bit better what, what where does uh so what's the situation with with plug-in ability in besu in that area if any today i know besu has sort of a plug-in architecture for other sort of um features or capabilities um uh yeah i was just interested in a bit of background or context on it really yeah absolutely um so the plugin system exists to allow a bunch of different things uh basically to sort of overwrite default values but also to extend functionality of certain modules um so you know we were thinking through what it would mean to have the consensus modules as a plugin so that the interface lines are very clean uh, within the code base and we don't have to lean so heavily on kind of like the named network configurations and the genesis file to do a lot of this stuff um the reason being is because there's oftentimes unintended consequences of changes that are meant to impact ethereum mainnet that trickle to other areas of the code and then when things break oftentimes sometimes much later on it becomes a question of oh like who did it you know what's the reasoning and who wants to fix it right so you know th this could be you know now that we have this thing called the engine api that allows us to kind of influence the way that base who runs execution uh through the evm and through other areas we were discussing you know how can we take advantage of that and the plugin architecture to basically just remove the consensus algorithm uh, as like a hard kind of dependency and make it more of like a, a pluggable kind of mechanism. I don't know if I'm missing any context, um, Gary, or uh, I don't know, someone else. Yeah, I can, uh, I think the, the notion that we were um, discussing was uh basically a mechanism that would allow us to have first class support for other networks and consensus mechanisms without polluting the code base with a lot of special cases and as as the number of l1s and l2s that are evm compatible proliferate uh, just not end up with a, a huge mess within besu so the the goal would be um i think to have we've got a couple of examples of non main net uses of Besu, and we're adding them currently that we're we're thinking we could have provide a paved path for how to support a non main net uh, configuration and uh, consensus mechanism uh, via via the plugin system. So that's kind of the notion. Uh, it's it's really just a notion right now, but it's gonna I think it's going to be a problem in the future as we as Besu tries to support more and more uh, networks natively. The, there was also the idea to take advantage of the engine API, you know, to to drive all the consensus uh, stuff. So yeah, to... the engine engine API right now is uh, mostly RPC and like plugging into a merge consensus. So I think we would probably we, there'd be some work there to abstract the engine API even to to abstract that into a plugin mm -hmm. interface that we could use, but. I think that would be a that's a good strategy. Yeah, it would it would maybe not be a plugin. It would really be that maybe the um, the consensus that, that there is like similar like a mainnet. There is maybe a separate consensus client. 
or a, a separate a separate process just for the just for the consensus mm, but then of course you always have to run two two processes um not just one just an just an idea but then yeah taking some notes down um yeah uh i'm sure that it would be interesting to say the least and i don't know enough about the poi consensus mechanisms to see where and how they would take advantage of the engine api basically or if there's enough functionality mm, yeah they are quite they're quite complex i mean it's just i mean if 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 we do a plugin or or we do a separate client, I mean in the end it's more or less um I I'm not sure. I mean the work is maybe similar to to, to extract everything in, in another place. But yeah. Yeah, the first example or two will probably be the hardest ones and then yeah. we hmm. have a paved path for others. Okay, maybe we can revisit this when we have Diego uh, to discuss. I think proof of work is probably the big first big one that we would want to think about. Okay. Um, yeah, adding networks to Basu, process and governance. I think uh, I'll you know I'll contextualize what this is, but I think we also might want to. <laughs> wait for Diego and Dano to return as they're probably the biggest consumers of non Ethereum uh, or basically private chain networks. So the the discussion point around this is like, what is the process to add kind of name networks, names, networks to Besu and to the point of what we just were mentioning, as Gary said, you know, there's compatibility within Besu at a, at a main line with, you know, things like Ethereum mainnet, private networks, Ethereum Classic, et cetera. Um, but as kind of L2 types network prolifer networks proliferate, what is our process for providing kind of built-in configs within Besu? Do we want to do that? Do we want to push everything to the plugins? Um, do we want to use kind of that engine API consensus plugin approach? Because an L2 is basically just in many ways a, you know, another consensus mechanism built on top of this kind of Ethereum state machine. So yeah, I don't know if we're going to get very far on this call with these folks, but that's what this is. I'll probably table it for the next discussion unless there's any anyone that wants to chat with through what this looks like. I don't know that we need to chat through what it would look like, but we might want to chat through what a process for it could look like, you know, so for instance, do we come up with like a software architecture design and then try and get some buy in from it. Um, asynchronously, um, because if we keep saying like oh well we don't have the right people here. Um, you know we're never gonna never gonna really move forward, but I think that we could, you know, write some of this up and run it by the people that we think might have opinions on it. Okay, so we could write it up offline uh, on our, on the potentially on the consensus with the Y side. Well, I actually think we should do it in the wiki. Um, no, I know. I'm saying box. we would take the lead for that because I don't think that anyone else would do it in the wiki for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you know, drive discussion around there, and then you know, when we do meet here. Um... All right. Yeah. That's a good okay. that's a good bullet point, Gary. We we should add that to like, you know, a loose list of goals to treat as an outline for what we are trying to design here. Um just just one input. I, I remember from one of the of the other execution clients from Aragon, the um, the team that, that was working on the Binance chain added their network as a PR to Aragon. So they didn't have to do anything. But afterwards they removed it again because they were left with the maintenance. So and if any user had a problem, they also came, of course, to, to the Aragon team. So we also somehow, I don't know, 
when, when we include a network, we have to be aware that the users will come to us if there's any problem with it. Even though so I, I would argue that this plugin approach protects us from that. Like you could create you could create a plugin system that represents a network, and then it's up to you know the plugin authors within reason. Obviously, we, you know, we, we could potentially break things that would that would break the the plugin contract. Um, but I think it, it does minimize that responsibility surface quite a bit. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you, actually, Justin. Now, the one one curious thing about the plugins is that they need to have, like, maybe I'm wrong about this, but don't they need to have their, like, basically the, the checksums, like, in the code base hard-coded, or there's, like, a roll-up of all the, the hashes of, like, the individual plugin packages <laughs> that we store somewhere? Yeah, well, Did it's we, the plugin we, API specifically, which yeah. is probably a good thing, you know, because that's that's what the plugin developers, if you're building a Binance chain plugin, let's say you're going to, you know, you're going to use that API hash that we generate to make sure that, you know, we didn't make any changes. Um, that is a very old mechanism, though, and I think that the scope of it needs to be revisited and um, and reevaluated to make sure it's correct. Okay, take a moment there. Yeah, yeah there's going to be puts the, an investment, I think, in, in pluginizing various things from various dimensions if this is an approach that we want to go into. So what I'm proposing to the doc is not just a software design, but also processes design, organizational design, documentation design, et cetera, that we kind of at least need to get a list of, wow, this is going to be um, a big move with big upside, and here's what we think the bill is going to look like. I like that. I'll make sure that we touch on just taking notes. Cool. Yeah, I think we can take a first pass at the wiki at some point and then reconvene in this group to chat about the next steps. Um, yeah, I mean, I think this is, these two bullet points kind of go together as just like an overall evaluation of the plugin strategy. I think that as we look, we're kind of moving the client in multiple directions, right? We want to focus, focus as much as we can on like the base use case, which is building all the functionality kind of separate from a consensus mechanism. So the EVM, the networking, RPC, et cetera, et cetera. And then where we have those kind of difference points is where we need to think through the plugin stuff. So I think we need to just take a hard look at the plugin system and see if it's going to meet those requirements anyway. Um, and it would be good to get that input, but yeah. Cool. Um, that's all I have here today. Does anyone have anything? We kind of have like an open open section now we can do q a we have some new contributors on the call like you can ask us any questions process related looks no one has questions or comments okay i'm just going to do a quick little walkthrough of some labels that we have. Um, for those on the enterprise private network side, we've been tagging all of our issues that come into the GitHub that are not directly related to mainnet or public networks with this non-mainnet tag. So if your users are experiencing specific bugs uh, that you're not aware of, or if you hear something from support channels, it might be worth perusing this label. Right now, there's only four issues that probably isn't fully accurate um, from our 222 open issues. But from as far as new issues are concerned, we at consensus triage with labels. We don't like, we have also a Zen Hub board that everyone can get access to. Let me know 
uh, me or Rye Jones uh, from Hyperledger know if you need access. Well, maybe not Rye, but I, I don't know. I don't think it's me either. But if, if you're having issues, ping me and I'll, I'll figure it out getting access. But we mostly do our triage here. Uh, if you see these team team labels, also don't worry too much about them. Um, you're fully welcome to pick up literally anything you'd like or to ask for any context. We use these team labels internally at Consensus to try to decide how we want to best uh, organize these issues. But again, they're very open. Uh, it's not necessarily intended to be exclusionary. Um, the other labels that are useful to call out um, are, of course, the mainnet label, good first issues label, um, and doc change required. If you make some updates to the code base that requires changes to the documentation, use this label on the PR, and the documentation team at Consensus will review the PR and change the appropriate documentation. Uh, so if you're like updating private network code for an RPC, for example, if you change the format of an RPC, or if you add a new RPC, something along these lines that will require documentation, just put this label in um, and it will trigger kind of some automated processes on our side to make sure that we include that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's kind of it. Yeah, there's privacy permissioning labels also. Um, we do use a kind of P1 through P5 prioritization matrix. Uh, I have it in a Google Doc right now. I'll actually put that on the wiki uh, for folks to review as well. If you're looking to triage bugs against this, um, this all, also might help raise awareness of things that consensus might need to jump on, um, depending on what the use case is. If it's an old yet critical bug uh, that you, someone is trying to address in a private network or a permission chain, um, yeah, that we might need to provide context. These might be helpful. Uh, I'll take for action to just actually post my post the prioritization matrix that we use on the wiki or update it if it's already there. Gary, I saw you came off mute. Do you have any comments on this? Uh, nope. Cool. Any comments or questions from the contributors? Oh, uh, actually, uh, I have one question. So actually, uh, there's one issue in non-minute uh, that's regarding uh, private transaction tracing. So, like, what will be the priority for that? And, uh, like, if you have any, uh, you know, um, tips or anything. So, like, I've just started, you know, contributing to uh, Besu. So, if there are any tips, yeah, this one. Any tips on so, getting it? Oh, go ahead, Justin, sorry. Yeah, as far as just like general contribution, um, there is a, a section in the wiki that, that covers that. Um, I haven't reviewed it personally, but if you see things in there that are ambiguous, underspecified, um, lacking direction, lacking examples, feel free to reach out to me directly and I'd be happy to update that and clarify that. Okay, okay. Yeah, is there any right? priority uh, for that issue? As far as we're concerned, probably not. Like I'm, our process before we we will review any code that is generated. We also can, if you have questions, we'll obviously provide any context. Um, There's also people actively working on tracing APIs, not private uh, transaction tracing, but it's going to be fresh in some contributors' minds. So if you want to, maybe if not pair with something, pairing would be ideal. But uh, just kind of having a, a a DM conversation or a thread with somebody who's actively working on it would probably be beneficial. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be happy to make myself available for preparing if that's going to work out. Um, Discord's the best place to find us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, uh, yeah. Put a question in that uh, base channel also. And yeah, we'll DM in case or uh, find an issue. Yeah. In the contributors channel. Oh uh, yeah. The contribution yeah. sounds good. Thank you. Thank any you. other qu questions? Any other questions? Uh, and now I was going to say, just firstly, um, that I might have a look through some of the good first issues, just because it's always nice to get your first PR under your belt, right? Um, uh, and also on the the plugin architecture discussions that around consensus plugin um 
uh, I'd be very interested in in how that progresses. So if there are discussions again, I can listen into or or um, uh, yeah, discussions to be involved in, then then I'd certainly be happy to sort of participate in those. Um, and I guess related to that, how does process work in terms of sort of scheduling calls and and is there a is there a, a repeat invite for the contributor call or is it just a case of keep an eye on the uh the wiki for for when calls take place there should be um there's a hyperledger calendar that has the hyperledger events and these are bi-weekly right um with alternating time zones yeah there's if you go to lists lists.hyperledger.org um uh -huh then you should you can subscribe to like the Besu group um and then you can make you can subscribe to the calendar as well and then they'll pop up in your in your calendar i think this is what i did and if you use google calendar i don't know like what you all yeah. use but you can just copy this url and it should just pull in and that's kind of what i use to track but yeah it's lists.hyperledger.org you might need to make like a new account. I don't think it uses your LFID thing, but you know, whatever you need to do to get on there. And then any, any BASU related calls will show up in the, uh, the BASU group under your groups. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. That's what I was missing when I had a look like a few days ago. Um, and, and in terms of, are there like working groups for sort of bigish features? How do they tend to get arranged? Yeah, so we've done working groups for forks in the past. Um, so we had like a Kank or a Shanghai specific channel in the Discord where we have kind of working groups around that. Um, I think that that's uh, we can basically continue to create new channels around large buckets of work to organize however we'd like. Typically, we just use the contributors channel um, and create threads in there. So the Basu contributors channel, and then we can you know pretty much all of the contributors check that regularly. So if you have a question or if you're trying to organize a bucket of work, that's one way to do it. There is ways to do it on the wiki, but I they're kind of not effective because you have to like meticulously update everything. I think that kind of more of the communication in Discord is better just because people can chat back and forth as opposed to like creating endless documents. Um, but yeah, I think it just depends on the feature. We kind of have organized around big buckets of work typically and not necessarily on feature development because that seems that tends to be isolated to the team that's working on it. But I'm open to new suggestions depending on what it is. Um, yeah, no, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, that uh, answers some questions I had here. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions here? If not, we can give some time back. All right, thanks. I will post uh, the notes that I took back in the same agenda. So if you were looking at the 2023-59 contributor call link, I will modify this with the notes there. Um, I'm just gonna share this link one more time just so that everybody's got it. It's the same link Francesco shared. We put our notes back into the kind of like agenda items sections. Thank you so much, Matt. Awesome. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye, bye everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, thank you.